What's up locals? Uh, just so happy to be here today at Canadian Nationals 2023 here in Thunder Bay, Ontario. Uh, joined by MPO Thomas Gilbert, uh, Canada's own, and uh, thank you so much for joining us for a quick chat. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, really, great to be here. really appreciate it. Uh, we just finished the second round today with one round to go. Um, I wanted to ask, obviously there's a ton of questions and our Canadian community had a bunch of questions, but um, you know, What's it like? You've done a couple of uh, events out west, mm -hmm. and now you're um, <laughs> heading through Ontario, which is obviously your home province. Um, must be good vibes playing across Canada. Like, what's that like playing in Canada? You know, yeah. versus the states. Is it? Is it? Does it feel it's, different? It does. Yeah. The the crowds here are awesome. Like they're all rooting for the the locals. So it's really nice to to feel the love, especially all the way out in BC. Like um, just feeling it from everybody. So that's really really great and. Yeah, it's also nice to be up here in Thunder Bay, still feeling the love. Have you played here before or is this your first time? Because this is the Nationals, I feel like it's often on the East Coast. Yeah. Um, and uh, I know from, uh, from us in Calgary, even going, oh my gosh, it's, you know, Nationals has come as far west as Thunder Bay. Like, you know, <laughs> people were getting excited to make the trek from Calgary even to here because it yeah, feels closer. Yeah. Have you played Thunder Bay before? Um, no, this is my first year here. Uh, I just got in on Monday to practice the courses and uh, yeah, it was pretty good. Got some solid rounds on each course and then, uh, yeah, got ready for the tournament. And good vibes today out there. And I know tomorrow's probably like the big day. So when I was thinking about today and this event, you know, is it is it kind of a no-brainer when there's like, you know, Disc Golf Nationals, for example, you know, versus playing, um, you know, Ledgestones this weekend. Mm -hmm. when, you're, when you're weighing those, is it like, you know, it's a chance to get home, kind of refuel, get a visit in with some family, some friends, like, is that an important part of your tour consideration, or how, how does that work? Yeah, for me, um, just the national title is is a huge title for me. Like winning it last year just felt so important. It's probably the biggest win um, that I've ever gotten, and so just that that was the main factor that brought me back here this year. I know Ledgestone's an elite plus, but um, and also just yeah, the hometown crowd's always nice to show up in front of. So totally, th those are the big factors to come to this tournament. I really loved, I mean, I think it was, I don't know exactly when the plans changed for Ella Hansen, mm -hmm. um, but I've noted, noticed throughout the year that she's got her, you know, Canadian patch on her bag, mm -hmm. noting yep. her um, FPO win last year. Yeah. And I think she had plans to be here till just, a, you know, till shortly ago. Uh -huh. um, so I, I'm sure it's a special, you know, experience. Mm -hmm. The uh, Canadian community uh, had a few questions for you. so. And I, I don't even know if some of these people are people you've played with. It could be um, yeah, Ezra yeah. Hauser, I think, yeah. had a question about your most memorable <laughs> round in Etobicoke at Centennial Park, I believe. Okay. He had a bit of a, it, it seemed like he was <laughs> kind of like cueing you to a story yeah, or yeah, to yeah. A, a situation. I don't know. I don't know. I hope I'm not setting you up for, no, I we'll mean, cut it. If it's, yeah. <laughs> uh, most memorable round is probably going to be one of the earlier ones. Like I remember, GTA Cup a bunch of years ago. I mean, I know that there's, that's probably not the round he's talking about, but um, that's like the most memorable. That was like the first time I went out to play those courses. Um, actually, the very first time I went out there, they still had the original baskets in the mock ones. And so that was very interesting because I was going and didn't find the actual course, but found the old course. And uh, that was very, a very interesting uh, first glance at the course. But then, yeah, um, the pawn shot on hole one, seeing the, the layout develop has all been really cool. And, and how was that Toronto scene like coming up to, to find yourself where you are now? Um, you know, was it, were you playing like certain courses or were you, was your family just, you know, supportive to the point where you were getting out to explore other communities or was it mostly in and around Toronto or where did, where did your game grow? Yeah, um, probably, I mean, it started out at E.T. Seaton as the first course I've ever played. I uh, went out there with some friends from high school and then, uh, I would say like Toronto Island became like the next yes. most common course that I played. I would go out there for league on Wednesdays and uh, just like rip around and kind of improve. But the most uh, practice or like the, the where I played the most often was probably my high school field. Uh, I would just rip rip shots in the field almost every single day for as long as I could. And uh, yeah, that was where I got most of my practice in for sure. I remember the first time we played um uh, Toronto Island. Um, I've been playing for about 18 years, and the first time going there and thinking, like, just going, oh my gosh, I, like, you know, I'd, I'd been playing like north, north of Huntsville uh, yeah. quite a bit, 
and discovered that course and just thought this was amazing. So yeah, that, to, to think about a Wednesday night league there, that, that's definitely a, a, be a special experience for sure. Yeah, a few other uh, notable questions from our Canadian community was a bit about, obviously about diet and about training and things like that. Is there like, you know, is, it, is there anything go-to, like, you know, what, you, what you're eating before a round was one of the questions, I believe. Uh, just try to keep it light, try to uh, have something not too like heavy set because like nothing feels worse than a brick in your stomach from a big meal right before the round. Um, so I just kind of have like something energizing and something good and then as well like practice just usually for tournament week it's like just kind of learning the courses but then uh, in the off season it's kind of more like field work and training trying to like learn different shots, um, get better at timing and angles and all that sort of stuff as well. Cool. And then so and then the other side of it was uh, about the training side of it, you know, is our, our weights a part of it? Someone mentioned plyometrics, um, you know, is that training side of it more of an off season thing for you? Um, what, what, how do you view that training side of, of disc golf as the sport continues to grow and players, you know, continue to do more and more to prepare themselves for the grueling season? Yeah, um, right now I think it's pretty lenient. Um, I definitely do uh, more fitness training like in the off season. I don't really do any kind of fitness training other than just like keeping the body loose, stretching and uh, making sure that I kind of keep injuries away as much as possible. Totally. Uh, but yeah, off season is a little more um, where you can kind of get into it a little bit more, get some body mass, get some training, do some specific things that, that you want to try to improve on. Um, I think that there's still quite a ways for us in the sport to be able to get to like the Olympic level training, but um, I think it's it's probably on its way. And are the limitations there in terms of like of resources? Motivation. Of oh, motivation. I, I, I think yeah. mostly just like you haven't needed to, to do the above and the beyond effort to um, really be like a true athlete, you can still kind of like sit around on the couch most of the year and uh, go out and play a tournament and still kill it. But I think nowadays uh, the separation in the like the tip top of the field is really being shown and uh, players are going to need to do a lot more above and beyond efforts to be able to get that upper edge on the competition. Sure. And, uh, and from here, uh, where does your tour go uh, next? Where are you off to after this? Um, I believe next tournament will be Deglow for me. That's back in Michigan, actually the closest pro tour to my, uh, to my home. So that's always a nice feeling. Um, and then from there, just a few more pro tours the rest of the year, I think. Um, the World Championships also coming up, uh, Discmania Open and then uh, the Maple Hill and then USCGC and then I, we'll see about Pro Tour finale. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Do you set goals for the season, or are you just like taking it as it comes? Like, obviously, it's good to have goals, but those can maybe you know from obviously we know how how mental the game is. Mm -hmm. um, do you set goals at the beginning of the season, or like you know you come home for this? No, I don't want to call it a break, but it's time to be home with family and seeing you know friends in that in in Canada here. Mm -hmm. Do you do you reassess? You know, not that this is the midway point. We're a little past halfway, yeah, but. Yeah. How do you look at goal setting or things like that around in disc golf? Um, I mean, you kind of set your, your goals at the beginning of the year. Um, those are where your like key goals are. And then as the year progresses, you might have little short-term goals that you are working towards and even certain things that just kind of arise that you kind of want to make it a goal to fix. Um, but overall, yeah, not nothing too drastic. How's the change been? Uh, going from a prodigy bag to um, mostly thought space? Yeah, it? mostly thought space. Um, I have the opportunity for open bags, so that's super nice. Like being able to throw what feels like most comfortable to me is, is like super freeing. Uh, it was a little bit overwhelming at the beginning of the year just sure. because I tried to throw anything and everything. So having to kind of dial it back down to what I know um, also was like a learning curve for me, but it's been really amazing to be able to work with ThoughtSpace and their discs and as well uh, have a few of my favorites from other companies too. Cool. And do you have a favorite from ThoughtSpace? Like um, yeah, right now I would say I really like the Pathfinder. The the Crux is like one of my new favorite mid-ranges, oh, but okay. obviously the, the Coalesce is like one of my go-tos for any type of like kind of fairway shot that needs like a little bit more distance. So sure. yeah, those are definitely some of the the yeah, the Coalesce, I've been, I've, I'm throwing it and I love the glide in it. It's just mm -hmm. been that little bit for, I find for myself, that doesn't have a big arm, just gives me that little bit more, a little bit more push than that traditional overstable fairway, you yeah. know, and I, I've been loving that about it. 
we'll keep rolling to give a little insight on Ella Hansen, uh, just because I want to give her the fair effort of not just like people thinking that she might have just dropped Canada because she could. She uh, really, really wanted to play this tournament. She signed up once the uh, Disc Golf Pro Tour announced that they would be dropping the FPO division uh, mm. for the remainder of the year, but then once they reinstated the United Tour and all the events that had been dropped off were back on, uh, she prioritized that because it's she's in the, the running for um, like Disc Golf Pro Tour point series of the year. I think she might sure. be even in like the top five or top three position. I think she just got third place today at Ledgestone. So. She's I think it's not a bad decision season. for her. Yeah, absolutely. And I don't have a, a obviously a bad yeah, thing to no, say there. Of course, yeah. And but I, I know appreciate you wondering that reason. Absolutely, because yeah. I think people get excited to see that. And yeah. I know for Canadians across the country, when we see her on coverage, we you know with the Canadian flag on there, yeah. there's a little source of like, you know, <laughs> pride there that yeah. like, oh look at her rep repping, you know, Canadian disc golf a little bit because of that big mm -hmm. win like last year for her. Absolutely. From our friend Marcus, um, he asked, who is the most fun disc golfer to play rounds with? on tour. Yeah. Um, and then were there, are there any like notable or funny experiences you've had like on tour? Like, a, you know, when you think back to like, oh my gosh, like that round or there was this shot that ended up in, you know, X wherever and yeah. it, any, any like really just notable things that, you know, for, for us to <laughs> kind of yeah, geek yeah, out yeah. over through you sort of. Yeah. Um, I think probably my, my two favorite players to play with is um, Calvin Heinberg and Nate Sexton. I think Calvin's just one of the coolest, funniest guys to play around with. He's super light and always has a good sense of humor. He's also just an extremely talented player. And same with Nate, we're really good friends, so it's always a fun time. Uh, and then as well, one of the kind of really fun memories um, from the disc golf tour was probably back in 2020, uh, the COVID year, me, Calvin, Eagle, Eric, and Zach Melton all stayed together in Vermont for three weeks because we had to quarantine for two weeks. And uh, we had our own little tournament there and we had our own practice and we did like this very fun uh, format for the week and actually got you described to make us a silly little unsanctioned tournament. And uh, yeah, it was always just a blast to, to play around with those guys. That's awesome. I mean, Nate, Nate Sexton from, from a distance seems like just a, a mentor of a man that like yeah. just wants to, you know, with his experience in that. And I, Calvin just looks like he's got such a dry sense of humor. So I bet those would be mm -hmm. amazing experiences. Do you have a, a course that on tour, either it's a favorite course to play or maybe you feel like it suits your game best and maybe those are the same answer? Yeah, um, I mean, Maple Hill is definitely my favorite course in the world. Uh, that course just is so beautiful, so amazing. It doesn't hurt that I also usually play pretty good there. Um, but yeah, I stay with Casey White and edit his house and that's always a fun time and uh, as well just playing that course it's set up so amazingly perfect for disc golf and uh, it's always a great time fun memories amazing well thomas i thank you so much for just being available and accessible to have a quick chat like this yeah. um, we appreciate it so much um, stay tuned for more videos and this is local we are local